So now without further delay, let's begin today's event, sponsored by SnapDocs and Evergreen Home Loans and hosted by National Mortgage News. It's my pleasure to introduce your moderator for today, and that is Elliot Cass. Elliot, you have the floor. Thanks, Greg, uh, and hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our webinar today on digital closings. And this, again, uh, this event, once again, is brought to you by National Mortgage News and sponsored by SnapDocs. I'm Elliot Cass, and I'll be your moderator. Here's a brief overview of today's event. Today, uh, to date, only a handful of lenders have fully embraced digital closings. For real estate professionals, it can be uh, quite difficult to change their existing processes, no matter how much their clients want them to. But consumer expectations are dramatically changing, and digital closings will soon go from a nice-to-have to a must-have if a firm wants to remain competitive. Today we're going to hear about how one lender, Evergreen Home Loans, successfully standardized a digital process for 99% of its loan volume in less than six months and is on track to do more than 5,000 hybrid closings this year. With us today is Tamara Rieger, uh, excuse me, Tamara Rieger, Executive Vice President for Loan Fulfillment at Evergreen Home Loans, where she directs Evergreen's technology initiatives, including its loan origination system, and is responsible for the overall customer experience, including the digital portions of that experience. An industry veteran, Tamara has been active in the mortgage industry for more than 23 years. Joining Tamara is Angie Ashton of the Chicago Title Insurance Company, where she is an escrow officer LPO. Another industry veteran, Angie has more than 30 years of mortgage industry experience. Rounding out our panel is Mike Filippi, who heads the marketing team at SnapDocs. Mike has over 12 years of technical product marketing experience, including with fintech companies based in St. Louis and the Bay Area. Later on, uh, our panelists will be taking questions directly from the audience. You can submit a question at any point during the webinar by clicking, uh, by, uh, clicking on the question field on your console, entering the question, and then clicking the, uh, the Enter button. And here's just a little bit of background about our sponsor. SnapDocs provides a digital closing platform that processes over 750,000 loan closings a year and is used each month by more than 50,000 mortgage professionals. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to Mike Filippi uh, to get us started. Mike, over to you. Perfect. Thank you, Elliot, and I really appreciate it. And again, welcome, everybody. We're really happy to have you here. Um, we're very excited and hope that you find a ton of value in this webinar uh, and from the success that Evergreen is having. They have a really cool story or on a great, and from what we can tell, uniquely successful path to e-mortgages, uh, which we'll cover all of that in just a second with the Q&As. Uh, but first, I want to start us off with our first polling question. It's a very simple one. I think it's an easy way to start. Uh, but we obviously want to use this opportunity to do a little bit of market research. And as I'm sure you are aware, there are not many sources of information out there in the market. So let's see if we can gather a little information from the attendees today, uh, and we'll obviously share this with you right away. So the first question is, do you currently have an e-close solution, and are you happy with it? So you have a few seconds to take the poll, and then we'll share the results immediately afterwards. So we'll give you about 10 seconds to answer that, or maybe 15 seconds. Okay, so it looks like we've got a few people submitted. A couple more seconds if anybody wants to ring in. Okay, let's look at the results here from that first polling question. Just to kind of start us off, give us a state um, of the market. Looks like 40% said yes, they do have a solution, and yes, they are happy with it. 4.4% uh, said yes and no, and then 8.9% said no. Um, and yes, and then of course 46.7% said no, they don't have a solution, and no, they are obviously not happy with it because how can you be if you don't have a solution? So great question, really appreciate that. Thank you everybody for jumping in. Okay, let's 
let's dive into it. I want to take a moment to build some context around what we have seen in the markets. Uh, we had a lot of conversations with lenders this year, and we see a high interest or high demand for e-closings in general across the board, uh, with some lenders already implementing various aspects and others looking to implement uh, throughout 2019, 2020, and even a few into 2021. We can see the rising interest uh, just by looking around at a few interesting indicators. One is the rise in digital solutions in general, um, but the other being the rising attendance at, at conferences that are more tech or digitally oriented, uh, just like National Mortgage News' own Digital Mortgage Conference. If you look there, they went from 600 attendees a couple years ago to 2,000 attendees this year. So we see interest, we see a drive uh, from lenders, from settlements in the industry to get on board with digital. But if you look counter to that, you see that there's still very low adoption or execution in the market. And a quick Google search will lead you to a number of press releases in the market celebrating single or even first-time digital closings, uh, but there are almost no announcements of anybody doing e-closings at scale. And a few months ago, uh, MERS put out some numbers that showed that in Q1 of this year, they had done roughly 19,000 e-notes uh, registered compared to roughly 17,000 in all of 2018. And while on the surface, that's great to see that growth. That seems uh, still a fraction of a fraction of the entire mortgage market or the volume in the market. So it's kind of interesting there's a disparity there. So if the desire is there, where is the volume? And I think really there's four reasons for this that we see in the market. And each of these you will see addressed by Evergreen in the coming sections. Um, but first, let's talk about what we see these major uh, obstacles being in our conversations in the market. First and foremost, uh, so far e-closings have meant more work for lenders rather than less. They often require lenders and settlement to do an extra step to set up the docs and eliminate any potential efficiency gains. Second is due to fragmentation in the industry and, of course, regulations that go down to the state or county level. So adoption has been slowed to, you know, uh, due to confusion and perceived risks. And then the third obstacle we usually see is with little consensus on standards uh, and lagging industry awareness and knowledge, finding the right information to get started can be really, really difficult for lenders and settlement. And you can often find different information from different places depending on who you ask. And then, of course, the fourth obstacle, and this is the one that I think is particularly important. Most solutions are focused on getting straight e-closings, right, going zero to 100, without really thinking about a more pragmatic tiered path that addresses uh, like the underlying fragmentation and, in and inefficiencies in the market first. So rather than lenders setting up their teams for success by adopting digital, uh, digital adoption in effective stages, many are trying to do the whole thing at once. And what happens is they wind up adding a second layer of processes uh, that are different from their existing process, right? So it's like a, a slap layer on top. And if you multiply that by however many numbers of partners uh, they have, it winds up being infinitely complex combination of closing steps and processes, which of course isn't scalable or efficient. So knowing that, we look at Evergreen as a great example and a template for others to follow. So where is Evergreen today? Let's paint a little picture of where Evergreen's at. Evergreen, headquartered in Bellevue, Washington, where they are full service direct lender with 65 regional offices throughout the Western United States. And for over three decades, Evergreen has served local neighborhoods with affordable home loan products while focusing exclusively on home lending. Evergreen is consistently rated Fortune and Great Place to Work as a best workplace in the financial services industry. And Evergreen is currently processing over 1,000 closings a month with more than 1,000 settlement agents. And since moving to a digital closing platform, which they rolled out in under six months, they have seen 84% of consumers electronically previewing their documents, and 92.5% of closings have had settlement upload a scanned and signed funding package back to Evergreen, which is just a phenomenal stat showing very, very high settlement adoption. And looking at their numbers, from January to June of this year in 2019, Evergreen has done roughly 4,996 closed loans with 99% of those closed loans running through SnapDoc, so that's a roughly 4,900. Uh, and of those, 54% were eligible for hybrids, which is 2,686 loans. And given the ramp rate, they are projecting 70% of all loans will be hybrid eligible by the end of the year. And I actually pulled their number as of today, and they're already up to 57% as of this month um, 
will be hybrid eligible. So you can see they're ramping very quickly, and in just a few weeks, they're, they're already adding more and more uh, hybrid eligible closings. And of those 2,686 hybrids, they have 68% capture rate with 1,827 e-signed loans completed so far this year and increasing exponentially. So there's some big numbers. They're clearly ramping very, very fast. So now that we have some context painted, I want to do a quick polling question and then get into the conversation with Tamara, which I know we're all really excited about. So this polling question is, how much of your total loan volume are you processing digitally through an e-closing solution? So I'll give you about 15 seconds to, to poll really quick. Love to see where you're at. So please take a second to fill that out. Okay, great, thank you. Hopefully everybody had a second to respond and fill in the survey. Let's look if we got some results here. Looks like people are answering, great. And let's look at the results. So the results are, how much of your total loan volume are you processing digitally through an e-closing solution? 0% is 56.8% of attendees. Then 13.5% of attendees said they're doing less than 25% through their e-close solution. Uh, then 8.1% said they're doing more than 25%. And then 13.5% said they're doing more than 50%. And 8.1% said they're doing 100% of their e-close volume. So very, very interesting. Obviously, the vast majority are not doing any at all, but there are some people that are doing a little bit over half. Uh, so that's an interesting number I think we'll dive into a little bit later, but thank you for everyone for taking the time to fill out that poll. And let's get into the first section with Evergreen and Tamara. Tamara, are you all set? Yes, I am. Again, thank you for joining us. Very excited to, to go through some of the strategies and approaches you had uh, while rolling out a digital solution and are moving towards e-mortgages. Uh, first, let's start out by looking for a solution or how you went about looking for a solution. Uh, first question. Why were you looking and what was the compelling event, if there was one, that made Evergreen decide to move forward with digital closings? Well, we saw two things that were happening. One, customers were coming to expect the convenience of e-signing. They already used the technology and transactions, uh, such as financing uh, the purchase of a vehicle, executing the real estate contract, or when you go to a bank and open up a line of credit. Um, in addition, they were already e-signing our initial disclosures. Um, the second thing is really e-closings was something that made sense and we wanted to do ever since implementing um, LMA and Compass for our LOS, which was about six years ago. We were already paperless. Uh, we had a paperless file all the way through the process. Then you would get to the end at closing and you were um, handling closing documents and paper. Um, so those were the two, the two key things that were happening in our organization. Yeah, and that makes sense. So was the digital closing side, is this the last piece of your digital journey? Obviously, you're waiting for a few more pieces at the very end of the, the full close with, um, with Ron and a couple of the other full e-sign capabilities, but was this the last piece for your bank in terms of how they offer, originate, and close a loan? I would say close to the last. It is obviously yeah. the very end of the loan process. Um, although this past year we've implemented a lot of technology um, with asset aggregation, really refining our online application. So I feel like we're really making a lot of investments to, to be better and better. I don't know that you're yeah. ever done. To me it feels like yeah, it's true. a continual process. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, with new technologies coming out all the time, you're probably always rolling out new digital uh, solutions, but at least now you, you, you're starting to get that foundation in place. So let's, let's look at the next piece here. What problems or challenges were you looking to solve with digital closings? Well, we didn't necessarily have a problem or a challenge per se. Uh, we were looking for a way to become more efficient and reduce closing and funding turn times while improving mm -hmm. the customer experience. Can we unpack that a little bit? I'm actually curious. So when you say customer experience, and we probably are all fairly on the same page with that, but I would love to see, in your opinion or in Evergreen's opinion, what do you mean by customer experience? 
Well, I somewhat pointed it, uh, to it when I talked about customers are electronically signing initial disclosures. And there are so many transactions that they can do electronically today that are outside of the mortgage industry. So yeah. when we're closing a real estate transaction and you go to escrow and there's a two-inch stack of paper that a customer has to sign, I don't know that that really wows a customer. Um, and they have to wet sign each individual, you know, individual document. So, yeah. And we also know if we're going to implement a technology, it needs to be easy for the customer to use. Because if the customer is having technology trouble with it, they're going to abandon it and then go back to the wet sign. And yeah, that makes sense. So what, aside from experience, what were the major benefits that uh, you were envisioning at the time? When you were looking for an e-close, what was the benefit you were trying to get? Uh, reduce our expenses, trying to figure out how I can do more loans with the same amount of staff. Uh, when you talk to lenders, we all uh, are experiencing the same concern with the cost to originate a loan is very expensive. The MBA will always share quarterly numbers, and I've seen it as almost as high as $9,000 as the cost to originate a loan. And we are making such a large investment in technology. Compliance is a huge expense for lenders. So honestly, if you're running a mortgage operation, you're trying to figure out how can you do more with the same amount of staff, and how can you really leverage the technology to get more out of it. And I'd say the return on our investment, we had not seen it with a lot of the technologies up until the e-closings, I think was the most, most significant. And that's great to hear. And I've actually heard from a couple other lenders um, that there was also a benefit to kind of stabilizing the ebb and flow of, of the incoming workforce, uh, workforce for the busy seasons. Have you seen that at all at Evergreen? Is there, is there um, a benefit you were looking for for stabilizing having to bring in contract or temporary employees to help process high volume times? Well, we, we don't outsource. Yeah. Uh, we would, you know, maybe hire temps to try to make up for that, or we're hiring permanent people that then we're trying to figure out how we keep them busy if it's slow. So we had, yeah. did see a direct impact where um, I, I didn't have to have staff sitting at a copier scanner converting a paper closing package into, mm. back into digital. And, and so the, you, know, what you, you can have your staff doing more high value jobs, not at a scanner. Right, yeah, focus them on more revenue, you know, oriented activities or, or instead of just holding up the operational part of it. That makes sense. Okay, so quickly, I want to do another polling question. This is the third of four. Uh, three of them are kind of front loaded in the beginning of the webinar, but this next polling question, oh, uh, you know what, I was one slide behind, I apologize. The next polling question, what do you feel is the most valuable benefit e-closings can provide to your business? If everybody could take a second um, to fill in their answer to this poll. I think this would be really interesting to get from the attendees. I'd love to find out where everybody's at from how they view value in digital closings. Okay, we gave everybody a few minutes to respond, or a few seconds, I should say. Well, let's move into the poll results. And so the question was, what do you feel is the most valuable benefit e-closings can provide to your business? 61% uh, said better closing experience for the borrower. I think that's pretty universal. Everybody would agree. 11% said reduction of manual tasks. I think that makes sense. If you look at the way closings uh, are processed, lots of time-consuming manual tasks. And then another 11% said reduction of days in the closing process. Makes sense. And of course, 16.7% said faster funding, really, really critical for a lot of banks uh, and a lot of lenders. That makes sense. Thank you everybody for submitting that poll question. That's great. And let's get right back into it. Uh, and let's go into selecting a vendor and dive into Evergreen's process for selecting why and how they chose. First question up, uh, Tamara, how did you start your search? Well, because we are on LNA and Compass, we started talking to our account executive at LNA, sharing with them um, that we were looking for an e-close solution. 
Um, then secondly, because we are a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac a seller servicer, we went to, uh, directly to the agencies and they do publish an e-closing technology solution provider list which will show lenders what providers out there are Fannie Freddie approved and if they provide an e-note, an e-close, or an e-vault. And so we actually went through the list and started talking to those that provide everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and did you find the information you were looking for? Or did you find it was available, or did you have a hard time getting all the answers? Well, actually, uh, it was almost too much, because when we first started talking about e-closings, there was only a handful of uh, vendors in the space. Now, yeah. I, when it comes to e-closing and just technology in general, there is so many vendors that yeah. you have to really know how to pare it down and get the most value of who you're going to talk to and who shouldn't you talk to. And, and so I'd say today it's, it's probably more overwhelming to try to select because there's just so many. Yeah, that makes sense. And there are so many, many with different stories, different um, ideas of what value they're bringing. So I, I have to imagine it can, be, it can be inundated with different options and it's a little overwhelming. All right, so next question up, uh, was there someone or somewhere, and we kind of just talked about this, but that you went for information in particular? If you can elaborate on that a little bit, I think that would be really important. Well, besides the, the agencies, because I wanted to be sure whoever we were using was going to be accepted by Fannie and Freddie, uh, yeah. you really learn a lot by talking to the actual vendors, um, because you'll get a little bit from everyone. And so yep. we talked to probably seven vendors, and I'd say Pavasso, DocMagic, DocuSign, eOriginals, those are just some of them that are very prevalent out there, and they're all very good, and they're just all a little different. And so you have to know what's important to you as a lender when you're talking to them, where your priorities are. And that makes sense. Um, so next question that I want to ask you then, what were you looking for in an e-closing vendor? So one, the customer experience again, is that the customer, if it's not easy for your customer, they're going to just stop, and be frustrated, yeah. and go a different direction. Yeah. Uh, second, uh, a vendor that would work with Encompass and be compatible with LMA's docs. And third, a vendor that was widely accepted among escrow and title. I think everybody would agree on those are obviously really critical because you want to keep the efficiency but also be able to deliver that experience. So what did you learn during the search? What were some of your takeaways? Well, we did learn um, that LMA's documents are not smart docs. So that means we needed a vendor that would produce smart documents or we'd have to find a vendor that could tag our documents without the burden falling on my staff. The whole point was to be, you know, to become more efficient. I didn't want to add yep. extra work to our workflow. So we that also, makes sense, learned, right? yeah. Keep, well, sorry, and, keep going. And the other thing with that is there's a huge benefit to using LMA's documents uh, in oh. our workflow, and we really did not want to switch off of my LMA's docs and go back to a, a vendor that was producing the documents outside of my loan origination system. That wouldn't have been a smart workflow for us, or, and it would yeah. have been more expensive yeah. for us. So that, why, that was really critical. Uh, so once I learned that LMA uh, did not have smart docs, my focus was really find, it was on finding a vendor that would help us tag, tag those documents. That makes sense. Okay. So you needed flexibility, obviously, to be able to work within LA May, work really well with LA May, but you also yeah. wanted to maintain efficiency, make sure you weren't adding extra steps, which we were talking about before. So perfect. Yeah. Or extra cost, exactly. Yeah. And so the <laughs> other surprising thing I learned with some of the vendors is that they actually charge the escrow company to use their service. And mm. so once I learned that, I thought that was a big disadvantage because if your escrow and title companies are going to be charged for the service, why would they use it? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. And you do see that in the market, but I think that's really important to keep an eye out for. 
What other big surprises did you find out there? Was there anything that really stood out um, you know, while you were doing your search? I guess I was most surprised that technology vendors would make promises on their capabilities, and they went as far as providing a demo of an integration that didn't exist. And so that was somewhat disappointing when we said, oh, this looks terrific, let's do it. And um, they showed us something that wasn't available. Yeah, we, which is we something really that... Have to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not something you want to see and obviously doesn't make it easy when you're trying to get something kicked off and implemented. Um, next question I wanted to ask you here is, did you change your understanding or approach to closings during this process? So with everything you learned, how did that evolve? We did change our approach. Um, as I shared when I went through the Fannie Mae eClosing technology uh, list, I was looking for someone that had everything. And so in the beginning, we were really looking for one vendor uh, that could provide the e-closing platform, the e-vault, uh, the e-note. And I'll be honest, it became a little overwhelming. And we changed our direction, and we did basically a two-phase process. And we, our focus then became to uh, focus on the best e-close platform first, and then add a full e-mortgage later with an e-note. And that makes sense. So obviously it evolves as you learn and you start to realize what's really possible. Why did you ultimately choose SnapDocs? What was the main reason that you landed on SnapDocs as your digital closing vendor? Well, we originally learned about SnapDocs from our escrow partners who spoke highly of the company and the platform. Um, and SnapDocs, after reviewing all of the technology vendors out there, they really ended up being the right solution for us. Uh, they met all of our requirements which pointed back to customer experience again, which is also security, that the security protocol a customer goes through, we really liked. Uh, we liked that they, they had the ability to tag all of our documents, and they were a vendor that our escrow partners liked and were using, so I know I would have the escrow acceptance. I think that makes sense. And so why did you choose to implement hybrids instead of going straight to the full e-closing? Well, there's a lot of reasons why a lender will do a hybrid. Um, not all investors are accepting e-notes. I would say that one's probably the biggest challenge. Yeah. We are Fannie and Freddie, and so we do um, sell and service our loans, but not all of them. And so we do sell loans to the aggregators, so I don't always know, and this, this is very true for most lenders, that you won't know who is going to be the end buyer of that loan until after the loan closes. That right. loan could go Fannie, it could go Freddie, it could go Chase, Wells, a number of aggregators. So Fannie and Freddie both, uh, Freddie both accept e-notes, but very few investors outside of that are accepting them. So that means, as a lender, I've really limited my execution options. So secondary might have better secondary marketing, who they're responsible for committing and selling the loans after closing. Mm -hmm. They may pick up better execution with one of the aggregators, and mm -hmm. I I could have a funded loan with an e note that I can't sell to one of those aggregators. Um, so. When I go to implement e-notes, I'll probably, you know, I'll be able to do e-notes probably on 50% of my total volume, but I won't be able to do it on 100% until the rest of the industry catches up and the aggregators start accepting e-notes. So that, that is really yep. Yep. one of the biggest decisions on why. Um, there is one other thing, because we are an independent mortgage banker, so like other IMBs, you will you fund off of warehouse lines of credit. Yep. So our warehouse banks, you know, I, I use five well-known warehouse banks, and one of those, only one of the five, will accept an e-note. So again, you're waiting for industry acceptance from investors and your warehouse, your warehouse bank. And I. So I actually think there's an interesting opportunity here. I, I want to dive into something a little uh, attached to that. And I want to talk to Angie really quick from Chicago Title. Again, Angie, thank you for being here. 
Uh, first question we have for you. So in this process, when Evergreen uh, was rolling out and was um, bringing out uh, digital closings, were you aware of SnapDocs? And um, what was that like on your end? What was that first process? And is there anything you would give advice-wise to settlement um, in that initial rollout of digital, so from lenders to settlement partners? Well, I, I was not aware of SnapDocs prior to the rollout. and um, and was not really notified that Evergreen was switching um, over to that. It was just one day I got an email and it was SnapDocs and, and opened it and the the process was super simple. Okay, I click here, it looks good, you know, and the instructions are really, it was really user friendly. I felt like it was really plug and play. Um, good, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. So no issues navigating. You feel like you picked it up pretty quickly and were able to run with it uh, pretty much off, right from the start, right? Absolutely. You know, I never had to call for support. And, you know, in comparison to some of the other sites that, you know, we have to use, um, the yeah. uploading and downloading of documents is super, super easy and, and user-friendly and fast, which we appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what advice would you give to lenders that are starting their search and um, what should they look for and consider, particularly when it comes with working with their settlement partners? Um, you know, I, would, I just would go back to their escrow officer and, and say, you know, what, what is working and what's not working. We run into so many sites that are, are only half working and it's, you know, super frustrating. Fundings get delayed. You know, the, the clients don't like them. What I've found when clients come in and they've already signed most of their documents electronically, they're completely, you know, happy and relieved. They want to get back to work. They want to get back to their schedule. So I would, I would just encourage them to talk to their their escrow officers to see, you know, what kind of experience they're having currently. Perfect. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so next I want to dive into Evergreen's strategy and approach. I think this will be really interesting uh, to kind of hear how they approached rolling it out and implementation um, with SnapDocs or with their digital closing solution. So Tamara, question for you. Um, how did you go about implementing? What, where did you start? Well, we really treated the implementation like a project. Uh, we involved our project management team. Uh, and the project management office was something that was fairly you know, newer to Evergreen. We probably had the team for about a year or two. Uh, normally, a department manager would take a project and see it through. So I would say having um, experienced project managers on our team uh, early on, they helped um, in the vendor selection process and they also helped me with technical requirements. So when it came yeah, I, time to, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I've heard this multiple times, but having uh, project managers, having an assigned team to handle this is really critical, right? Is that that's what you saw on your side? I would attribute it to a lot of our success by, by having a project management team and making sure that they're included early on, uh, because when it came time to implement, we were all on the same page. They understood the technical requirements. We knew that those were met. They were involved in uh, weekly meetings that we would have, you know, sometimes daily, when we were yeah. going through implementation with SnapDocs. Um, and so when we implemented um, at Evergreen, we had eight regional funding centers. And so our approach was to train the funding center and those branches that that funding center supported at the same time. So it gave us a nice phased approach and it, it really did allow us to roll out 65 branches in less than six months. And we were completely rolled out at the end of 2018. Which is fantastic. Uh, and then the next one I wanted to ask you, did you focus on any small wins or grow from there? So this kind of leads into what you were just talking about, but what was the big like granular goals you had or how did you start this uh, to make sure that you were successful? Well, with, with most projects, we make sure that we're starting those in our home office funding center. The home office, as some people would refer to as corporate, but Evergreen, it's home office. And that's where a lot of our departments are located from underwriting um, our yep. funding. Our VP of funding, Lily, is in our home office. So we can control the process better here from the home office. So we spent we spent the time here preparing in the home office, did a lot of preparation on the front end, 
and we launched 15 branches that the Home Office supports um, when we did the pilot. And did, did SnapDocs help you, um, you know, during this process to ensure a successful rollout? How did SnapDocs step in and help with this to make sure you were uh, successful in getting out to your team, your offices, your settlement partners? Yeah, honestly, they were wonderful. They didn't just say, okay, here's the platform and, and go for it. They partnered with us on all of our training materials, creating friendly videos. I thought the videos were great. It wasn't just a document I, I would give somebody. We posted the videos um, on our intranet so that um, our loan officers, our processors could view those. And we shared those videos and made them available to our borrowers and our escrow partners. Um, so the, the videos were fun, and I hope that I think it really helped get people interested um, as yep. opposed to just saying, here, follow this, this document. They also, and I think this is very important, is they helped yep. us fine-tune our email messaging. Um, so the communication was very clear and concise for all the parties. And we did spend a lot of time on the messaging that was delivered in the system versus what we thought would be, you know, make more sense with the partners. So they helped us all along the way throughout, throughout that setting up the system, and being very prepared prior to rollout. And Angie, a question for you. Uh, what was the rollout process like on your side from the settlement side? Um, well, I mean, like I said, it was super easy. Um, but one of the main things I completely love about it is when, when steps are taken, the whole team is notified. So I normally, when I get done with signing, I normally, you know, try to email, you know, the loan officer and the processor, hey, you know, documents are signed, signing went great, um, you know, I'm uploading the documents now. Um, and then yeah. I would get frustrated because if I forgot somebody on that team, I mean, some loan officers have, you know, five people on their team, and, you know, the one person I missed would say, what's going on with this loan? Well, with this system, once I'm in there, everybody's notified at the same time. And so the communication is just seamless, which I completely love. So quick question for you, Tamara. I know we're going to run a little short on time, so we might do this a little briefer. But one of the things I wanted to find out and I think would be really valuable uh, for the audience is what sort of challenges did you run into uh, and how did you overcome it? Well, there's two things that you have to be careful of. Um, in your system, you do have to have a way for the customers to opt out if they do not want to electronically view their documents or sign their documents. And that's a process most of us have today because if you don't eat consent, you're not going to be, you're not going to go down the electronic channel. Um, but I would have some branches that would opt out the customer at the application because they didn't want to go through and change their process or take the time to learn a new process. The other danger is with, your, with the escrow closers. Um, same thing, they would print out the entire closing package. And so the customer may have already done their e-signing, um, let's say at home, and then they come in to sign the what sign docs, and the closer would have printed out the entire package. So like how Angie indicated, if everybody's working in the same portal, the closer can see that they've viewed the documents, they've signed their documents, and we're all on the same page. So the, the, those are some of the dangers that I didn't anticipate, is that somebody would take, the, you know, take my electronic closing package and convert it to paper, have a customer yeah. wet sign it, then they convert it back to electronic by scanning it back in kind of defeats the whole purpose. <laughs> it does. So next section I want to get into, let's really quickly touch on this, and I'm curious to, to hear from Tamara and, of course, from Angie from the settlement side as well. Let's look at working with settlement. Uh, why is settlement adoption so important to your success, Tamara? Uh, real brief. Well, with what I touched on, if the closer converts it to paper, it's defeated our whole process um, because 100% of our loans, we are – uploading those documents to the portal and communicating with everybody through the SnapDocs portal. So when we rolled out SnapDocs to our settlement partners, uh, we did send a letter to all of our partners announcing the change and that all closing packages, like 100%, would be delivered through the secure portal and would have to be returned to us via the same portal. 
That makes sense. And, and Angie, on your side, uh, why is working closely with your lenders on digital closings so important? Well, I mean, it's just it's a huge time saver not to, you know, go back to the 100% paper. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, and and I probably did get the announcement of the rollout but <laughs> and didn't pay attention to it. Um, we're all busy. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that's a success story that I didn't read the rollout uh, information and I still figured out that you know True. the system yeah. you know it's it's really it really is that easy and I will have to say you know it, you know from a 30 to 45 minute signing appointment we you know people are usually done in about 10 minutes and the the clients are just thrilled with it. So, yeah, so I, I just, you know, there's nothing wrong with the loan officer, you know, calling an escrow <laughs> officer out and just saying, you know, hey, listen, there's no need to print everything out. It's already been done for you. And I think that that would probably be a one-and-done conversation. <laughs> it would be more efficient. I think that's great. And a really quick response uh, from you, Angie. Do you think now you have a fairly seamless experience uh, with your lender partners and, and, and for your mutual customers? Well, through snapbacks, yes. Through other systems, no. And uh, you know, when when other systems are are popped up, and we know that it's going to be a long drawn out, you know, just to access the system, get our documents, you know, even if they have a, a hybrid available, um, we that kind of goes to the bottom of the stack until we have time to work through it. If I see snapdocs, I know I can get through it really quickly, which means that you know that customer just came to the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so last section, uh, we'll have to kind of go through it a little quickly, but this is really important. I want to cover what you've learned and your advice. So these might be short responses, but uh, Tamara, looking back, what have you learned? What would you wrap that up uh, in the shortest way possible for other lenders? When you implement the technology, you have to change your workflow. You have to build it into the workflow, which is why we did 100% of our closings go through the Snapdocs portal. And you have to be very careful about your communication. A loan officer and settlement partner adoption is critical, and you really need to do that hands-on education. Like, we will go back out to the branches and we do in-person e-closing trainings with our loan officers to make sure everybody's on board. And if you had to change anything, what would you have changed or done differently? Um, I really didn't think to engage my marketing department earlier on in the process. You know, we're very good at marketing to the customers and to our agents, um, but this is an internal adoption, an internal initiative that I didn't really think to put a lot of fancy marketing around it, and and so that was a little bit of an afterthought. And we we do a lot of internal marketing now around e-closings because we're obviously trying to promote it to get to the 70% goal. Yeah, and I, I think it's important to treat your internal teams, your LOs, everybody um, as customers, right? They're of customers of this new technology, so you have to nurture them, engage them, and, and bring them on board to your point. I think that works really, really well. Um, let's see here, last, or, or almost last question here. Are you happy with your success? I'm very happy. I'm even happier now that I've heard Angie talk about the escrow experience. <laughs> but you don't often, you know, and in my role, I'm not talking with the escrow um, officers every day. So um, I'm very proud that we've been able to capture a high number of hybrid, hybrid e-closings. It really has become a key differentiator for evergreen loan officers with our agents and customers. Perfect. And last summary of advice you would give to other lenders looking to offer e-closings. Start with a hybrid e-closing first. Get the process and workflow down. Trying to implement a full e-mortgage and e-close all at the same time, um, it, it was overwhelming. It could prevent, and I think it does prevent, a lot of lenders from getting started at all. And overall, I want to ask each of you one time, and I, I believe this wraps it up. Uh, Tamara, overall experience with the process and offering digital closings, uh, where are you at looking back you know, over the last several months? You know, it's been a great experience. I think it's turned out better than what I anticipated. If we could have implemented e-closings earlier, I would have done that. It, it, it's what you should expect, though. It is a process that you have to go through, and it takes time. 
Um, but I'm very happy that we've done it. And um, I guess I'm surprised how few lenders are offering an e-close. And yeah. so that's part of why I like to share our success story because I think it not only it will help other lenders, but it's going to help our industry as a whole. And Angie, to wrap things up, any last advice or reviews of your experience with SnapDocs and Evergreen? Oh, I mean, I just, you know, I'm, I'm appreciative that, um, that the industry is, is going towards, you know, making things more efficient and, um, and making clients happier and more at ease. So I'll, I'll have to say that <laughs> it's, it is, it's been really nice, and I'm, I'm just appreciative, truly. Perfect. Well, I think that was absolutely fantastic. So we have one last polling question, and then I'm going to pass it back to Elliot for some Q&As. Uh, but first, this polling question that I want to get from attendees um, is, at what stage are you in considering an e-closing solution? I'd love to see where people are at. Uh, a lot of conversations we've had in the market, some people are, are already way down the pipe, some people already have it or, or, or feel like they're in a good place, and others just have barely started looking into it. And I would love to kind of get a pulse of the market and where we're at right now. So please take a second to answer that polling question, and then I'll share the results with you in just a second. Okay, it's about 30 seconds. Let's see what we got. At what stage are you in considering the closing solution to which 16.7% said they already have a solution? 16.7% also said they haven't begun looking. 44.4% said just beginning to do research. Zero said they're actively evaluating vendors, and zero said they've selected a vendor. So that means currently implementing with a chosen vendor leaves 22.2% left. So it's an interesting disparity there. There's The bulk is doing research. There are some that are in the implementation process. But a little bit of every stage, which is kind of the, the theme that we're getting. So very interesting feedback. I think there's more uh, warrants deeper uh, questions to go into exactly where the market is, and of course this is all contingent on how you define a digital closing and what exactly you're doing uh, with your e-close. That being said, I'm going to hand this back to Elliot, uh, who's going to take over some question and answers. Thank you, everybody, and here's Elliot. Thanks, Mike, and uh, thanks to you, Tamara and Angie, for those really interesting perspectives. Uh, yes, now we're going to turn to the questions that our audience has been submitting throughout the webinar. And uh, if they have a question at this point, they can continue to submit them. But let's quickly turn to the first question. And this one is for uh, Tamara and Evergreen. Um, how have you dealt with uh, investor acceptance of the new process and the new system? Has any of that been an issue? On the hybrids, not so much. On the e-notes, it has, because they're really they're not ready yet. A lot of the large investors are doing pilots right now with e-notes with some of their lenders. Uh, when you first start doing hybrid e-closings, you do need to notify your investors that you are going to be doing that. Uh, they want to know who your vendor is going to be. Uh, there's a questionnaire sometimes you have to complete and then send back before you can start delivering hybrid e-closings. So I just, just so people are aware. And then we, we had calls with both Fannie and Freddie. They were wonderful in getting on conference calls with us. And there's no approval process that you have to go through for a hybrid um, e-closing with Fannie and Freddie, but there is a process you go through for approval if you want to do an e-note. And uh, Tamara, we have a question from the audience here. He says, uh, uh, sorry, I must have missed this uh, before, but what is the definition of a hybrid closing? Can you, uh, can you give that to him? So a hybrid, a hybrid closing is where the majority of your documents are electronically signed with the exception of the following documents are wet signed, and that is your note and your notarized documents. So we have not implemented any type of electronic notarization right now. That's on the roadmap for later this year. So really a hybrid is majority e-signed. I would say there's seven documents left signed. 
Great. Thank you. So I'm going to jump ahead to the next question. And uh, surprise, it's for you again, Tamara. Um, what was the benefit of uh, bringing all of your volume onto SnapDocs? I know you've spoken to some of that, but maybe you could uh, summarize that. Well, I can tell you it really eliminates confusion because you, it, and I had uh, touched on this on the call, is that you really have to integrate it into your workflow and change your workflow for it to be successful. So for us to pick certain loans won't go through and some will, um, I really feel would cause a lot of confusion between escrow, um, possibly our loan officers, the customers, so at Evergreen, we have one channel. They all go through the SnapDocs portal, customer and the escrow is used to working with us. There's a huge benefit that Angie touched on from a closer perspective that we're all communicating in that same portal. So there's a lot of benefit to the SnapDocs portal besides the fact that they're, they're, they can e-sign. And so for it to really, I think, to get really high adoption rate and reduce the confusion and guarantee higher success for just e-closings in general, I, I have everything 100% go through the same portal. Great. Um, and uh, again, next question also for Evergreen. What type of feedback have you received from, uh, from borrowers? I think that's been the most interesting because you can see the communication in the portal. And in addition to that, we did customer surveys. And so it was very important to us that as we were rolling this out, we, we had a way for the customers to give us feedback. So we would receive a variety of feedback from, you know, I'm an, I've bought 20 homes in my lifetime or did 20 transactions, and uh, this was the easiest. Uh, I saw cu customer communication in the portal where they would find an error on a document, and it, they had the ability to notify us that, uh-oh, I found an error, or there was supposed to be a credit, a seller credit, and I don't see it on my, my documents. And that gave us as the lender time to correct that and also gives escrow time as well. So the, the customer feedback had been very good. I would really recommend that if you implement an e-closing platform, have a way that you can survey your customers and hear from them what's working and what's not. So we have a couple of uh, questions here about the e-closing uh, process. Um, the first one is, are the wet signed and the e-signed documents executed on the same day. So uh, I don't know, Mike, Tamara, uh, one or both of you. I, I can answer that. Um, I actually spoke on a, uh, a digital mortgage panel at a conference last month, and this is a common lender question. So in the beginning, we thought that it was important that they sign, that they e-sign and wet sign the same day but it's not. Uh, so what we found and what the investors are accepting is I can e-sign my documents at home tonight, and then tomorrow I can um, go to escrow and sign the wet sign documents and have those notarized obviously the same day that I wet sign those documents. <clears throat> so all the documents are actually dated the same date, they're produced the same day, when the customer signs them, they can be two separate days. The e-sign can be one day. The wet sign documents can be the next. And that has not been an issue for our investors. Great. So as kind of a follow-up uh, to that, um, another questioner wants to know, how are these documents tagged in the system? Yeah, that's a great question. I'll give the, the quick answer. Um, so we have um, AI bots that we've invested a ton uh, into developing, and those AI bots um, grab those documents, pull them into SnapDocs, uh, and ingest them, and then they can automatically sort, tag, classify, uh, and annotate those documents, no matter what the document is, uh, with very little impact to existing workflows, so lenders can, can basically plug and play with, that, with uh, SnapDocs. We'll take them, do it in a little under 11 minutes, 
um, sort them into wet and e-sign packages depending on the preferences of you and your investors, uh, and then of course send them down to title for, for a similar process. Um, so it's all done through AI and our machine learning. It's, it's incredibly easy and it's all automated. Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we're running close on time. We're going to try to slip in uh, two more questions here. And this next one is um, for SnapDocs. Uh, do you have the full eClose solution that includes the eNote, the eVault, and so forth? Can you talk a little bit about that, Mike? Yeah, I, I can answer that pretty well. So the answer is yes, we can do a full e-close. However, there's an asterisk to this with the e-note and e-vault. Um, we've specifically focused on building out hybrid capabilities um, without the e-note at this time because of what, um, what Evergreen and Tamara talked about in the whole webinar, which is let's set up the underlying processes first. Let's streamline everything. Let's get it working correctly before we start moving to it because uh, acceptance of e-note and e-vault has been very fragmented, very disparate. So you know, we could go for that right out of the gate, but the truth is you, you just don't need it right now. It's something you need to fix your underlying workflows first, and then you can easily build it in. And we have this uh, rolling out to, to Evergreen and to our lender partners um, towards the end of 2019, and it seems to fit perfectly into their roadmaps. Okay, great. Thanks. And uh, here, one more question we're going to squeeze in here, and this is for Tamara. Um, has the digital close project helped you uh, in any way with your recruiting and retention of LOs? I think it has. Um, you see a lot of companies out there that say they have a digital mortgage, and there's a lot of companies that just have really good marketing around it. Um, but with Evergreen, we the numbers don't lie, um, and our and our partners know from experience, so the real estate agents, escrow companies. Um, I thought having Angie on the phone today was, was terrific, um, and she really spoke on that customer experience. But it has helped us um, because we can show loan officers that we're recruiting that we truly do have a digital process that works, um, just based on the, the high volume that we've been able to put through it. And we're a medium-sized mortgage banker. We're not a quick end, yet we're doing, the number of transactions we're doing is uh, quite a large number compared to what some of the just huge uh, mortgage companies out there um, is doing. So I'd say we, we did get some good marketing uh, for recruiting around our digital clothes and what those benefits are, and the numbers don't lie. <laughs> All right, great. Well, thank you, Tamara, and thanks to... Uh, uh, Mike and uh, and Angie, and um, unfortunately, we're out of time. So I'd really like to thank everyone for joining us today for our webcast on digital closings. We hope you all found the session valuable, and um, a special thank you to Tamara, Angie, and Mike for taking the time uh, to share their insights with us. And uh, uh, not to be remiss, a very special thank you to SnapDocs for sponsoring this event. If anyone missed any part of this presentation, it will uh, be available for download within 48 hours on the National Mortgage News website. I'm Elliot Cass, and on behalf of National Mortgage News and SnapDocs, thanks for being here with us, and have a great afternoon.